As designers, we must admit that we really suck at planning what our, all of our edge cases will be. That's why you can just start using placeholder components in your designs and you will just scale up your workflow. Now, a placeholder component is essentially just a component that you insert in a place where you're uncertain what the future content will be. They're great for models, bottom sheet dialogues, and very repetitive places where you're going to have like similar things that are just going. During my time at TopTal, our app had a lot of bottom sheet dialogues. And as you can see, it was really hard to predict them. And a lot of them showed in multiple places of the app, depending on the scenario. And I didn't want to create uh, a bottom sheet dialogue for every single scenario because there they can be a lot. What we had to do back then is use placeholder components. And now I'm going to show you what the true power of placeholder components are. Let's just start with one example, which is this one. I look at this and I do see, okay, this is my main area that is going to be a tappable area. What you're gonna do to create this placeholder component, you just hit T, tap in uh, the letters and just text replace me, which is a normal thing. And just add your size as 17, the normal button. You can even like add an icon. Um, something like this. Totally up to you. This is not mandatory. That way it adds auto layout. This is an essential part when you're doing placeholder components because it aligns to a certain specific of size. Now, in this scenario, I know that my width will be 343 pixels and it's not going to change a lot. I also want this to be centered. And I went, actually, I want it to be like this. What I will do now is just make eight pixels roundness and you can just add like um, a stroke to it depending on what you want. Let's add this purple and let's just make it dashed. And let's add some fill. So it's really important to make this um, element really stand out that it's visible that it's a placeholder component. And you can just grab like something like this. You can you need to style it to the brand you have and just rename uh, this. Now, after you've done this, just come here, create the component, and this is your replace me component. You can just rename it like this. After you've done, you go to the next step. Now, planning that you have a lot of elements, you already know what you should do. Uh, you just go and plan and just start building out this bottom sheet dialogue. Now here I have the header, which I'm just going to drag. And I'm going to hit Shift A again. I'm gonna remove the spacing because I don't want any spacing, but I want the placeholder component inside. And I would want to have as well the home indicator to here as well which I got from a library from Joy Banks, which I'm going to link down below. Now, this doesn't look like this. So of course we need the fill, which is our white. And on top it's 14 by 14. That's it. Okay, so I also want the spacing to be, uh, to have like eight, let's say, oops, have eight between elements. And I want everything to be centered. That way I know I have eight here or eight up. And I'm gonna show you why uh, this is important. Now, in this case, you don't need this. Just drag the main element, the main component, place it here, and call this bottom sheet dialogue. <laughs> Let's call it just like that. Once you're here, this is your main component that you can just place everywhere. And I can just tweak this title. That's the cool thing about Figma. I can just tweak this title so I don't need to create like 15 different titles about it. So create a component and you can see that your slot component is actually moved. And now this is your bottom sheet dialog. Now it becomes the fun part. Um, there are two things that you need to do. Now here I have an overlay which I don't want to remove really. I don't want to deal with it right now. So. The only thing that you should do is remove this. You copy 
hit command C to place it, uh, to copy it, paste it, hit uh, option S to move it down. And in my case, it's extremely important that it's always stuck to the bottom. So I hit like to be aligned to the bottom and to be, I don't want to have like just one component. Like, I, okay, what should I do now with this? And the power is that right now you're going to see that if I change the thing, so it's going to reduce. So let's keep it like this. Uh, let's call this part time. And what I'm going to do is first, it needs to be an outro layout. Now, this is the most integral part that people uh, mistake with it because they forget to put outro layout. And it oftentimes looks something like this, which is bizarre. And just add 16 or 24. And then just add 16 in between elements. Add the buttons. And that's pretty much it. You can see that it needs to be 14. And this is your one of your components. Now I have this that's already created as a component, but I want this to be as well. So all you need to do is just move it and create component set. And these are your components essentially, because both have auto layout and just rename them to um, our pickers. Let's call them like this. What I also want like to do is just add auto layout to this box and just make it a little bit more organized. Um, and this is like your essential. You can always like add variants. When you come here, uh, you can just duplicate it, add a variant, uh, and add all of your elements that you have. For example, I would add every single thing like this. So if we go and let's no, and let's pick this one because it's a little bit more complicated. I'll just copy it. I'll just come here, get this, just duplicate it, open it, paste the frame that I need inside. I don't even need the frame. I just need the outro layout box here and just remove the other elements. And this is my um, talent. And now that you have added all of your variants, you just go to your main component on your screen. And if it's linked to it, all you need to do is just select the replace me component, click here, create your master's component and variants, select it and just change the design you need. And from here, if I just need to, let's say I want, I don't know, for some reason, I want this button to be wider. You can see that I can just change it here or change my local buttons. I need to affect them everywhere. Um, a very cool thing that you can do um, is go to, for example, your descriptions and just type in what needs to happen there. Uh, that's very intuitive. And for some re reason, Figma doesn't work for me right now. So you can enter your descriptions. What content do you want to have in there? the use case that you're needing it. If it's a model, you can provide specific, like only for models with illustrations. I didn't know this technique and I learned it from Michael Riedering, Tom Laurie and Louis Oriak. And I'm beyond thankful for them. So I leave all credits to them in the description and stay tuned and subscribe for more.